Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. And I want to say a huge thank you. We want to say a huge thank you to Miss Dorothy. She's our newest Patreon, and we really appreciate your support. Thank you. Again, exclusive videos going up on Patreon um, multiple times, typically every week. And I think there's a lot of people waking up maybe for the first time uh, to what's really going on on the planet and and starting to be a little disillusioned with what they are hearing from every side, really. But basically, we're going to drill baby drill, we're going to get the energy prices down almost immediately, and we're going to close the border, and we're going to get the crooked ones out, the bad ones out. And, and we're going to let a lot of people, people come in because we need more people, people especially with AI, AI coming and all of the different things, things and the farmers need, everybody, everybody needs. But, but we're going to make sure that they're, they're not murderers, killers, or drug dealers, and the, the kind of people that we have largely coming in right now. Okay. Well, we have 30 million uh, by many sources, about 30 million people that have come in illegally in you know the last just handful of years. And so when you hear this, we're going to let a lot of people in. We're going to let a lot of people in. This is something that is disillusioning people. Now, me personally, I, I don't think we should have any borders because borders create the opportunity for conflict. And yet, of course, we don't want to have a world that's led by the UN and all these uh, systems which keep us divided for the express purpose of having conflicts which make money for the military industrial complex create loosh keep keep them in control uh, keep the population at a certain level and keep the system going now it terrifies some people to say well I really don't think that we should have any borders because this is what they've been brought up with and the only way they can envision that is through the Bible perspective of the beast system. And that's purposeful. Somebody else was making an anagram saying you could take Namaste and you know twist the letters around and make an anagram of me, Satan. It's like, how stupid can it be? You know, I mean, seriously, that's that's like infantile. But at the same time, what the system does is the system knows um, what is a good concept and they'll terrify people with the system itself to make them fear a good concept again borders and and creating artificial constructs these borders always change the wars never stop so again as we said many times like Matthew 24 rumors of wars it, there's never been a time when there wasn't war in in the last 6,000 years of that we know uh, you know, maybe here in the U.S. we haven't had a war on our soil, and that's what makes us uh, feel differently. But the reality is, yeah, absolutely, war has always been on this planet. And yet you're seeing that they, on, on, on both sides, they really, look at the look. That's the look of somebody that knows they're, sell, they're selling you a lemon. They're selling you a lemon. Madam President, we will deport the foreign jihad sympathizers and we will deport them very quickly and Hamas supporters will be gone. If you hate America, if you want to eliminate Israel, then we don't want you in our country. We really don't want you in our country. I will ban refugee settlements from terror infested areas like the Gaza Strip. And we will arrest the pro-Hamas thugs who vandalize federal property and make really life very, very difficult. To there should be no federal property. You know, this is again, okay, so if you hate, uh, there. now the quote they put in there is, if you hate Israel, he said, if you hate America, um, or if you're anti-Israel, again, who created Israel? Immediately you're going to have so many people say, God did. But, but no, that's a mistranslation. It, it's again, giving a reference to a particular being uh, that is uh, Yahweh, uh, and ultimately uh, Yahweh is a being that was recognized as an alien type of entity that came and with others took over this planet. So you have people that discovered the Book of Enoch 
and the watchers, the uh, ones that come down to earth and, and corrupt the system. But what they don't realize is, is that the one they're given power to or those they're given power to are those beings. So, you know, this is where the system comes from. The system comes from uh, another realm, let's say. And here, it was recreated uh, by the UN. Israel was recreated by the UN, the UN mandate, through the work of one of the particular families that many people know. It's a very, very well-known name, the Rothschilds. Again, at which, again, they're part of the banking system. The banking system, the monetary system, keeps us you know, embedded in this debt slavery system. So what you're seeing now from 45, who will probably be 47, or maybe he'll be number one of something kind of new, uh, and maybe he won't you know, be out for long, but it, it's, it's just a shift to the same old, same old. Uh, it's, but it's appeasing certain people in certain ways. But you know what? As we awaken, it's, it's not going to work because you know, more and more people are, are starting to you know, break through uh, all their programming because we've all been programmed from birth and starting to recognize, wait a minute, something doesn't feel right here. Mm-hmm. You know, it is, it is a very frightening thought for a lot of people when someone says there should be no borders because we can only conceptualize what we have seen. But there was a time in this land where beings looked out for each other. They didn't look down on each other. They helped each other. They worked with each other. They worked with with nature. You know, they watched nature and they mimicked nature. And, you know, if if one area is very productive for a certain amount of beings and another area is productive for another uh, group of beings, then so be it. It, it wasn't this huge, huge battle. It, it, it was a higher frequency. It was a different understanding. And I, I do believe that thoughts are things. So if we could conceptualize a place where people are not afraid to be on this earth and share her resources, I mean, just imagine it. It would be a good thing. I think people think right away is, oh, you're going to let other people in that are going to harm us. But what if those other people coming in, what if they were raised without torment, without trauma, and they did come over and we were able to go over there and there was just no big deal and people shrugged it off and we just got along. I mean, we we really can't get there unless we can make the thought. So we have to get past our trauma to create the thought to create something new. That's what I think. Yes, absolutely. And I see more people quoting again, Albert Pike, Three World Wars every day. More and more people are waking up to this. Um, And even these uh, channels that have been so pro-Trump, so pro-Trump are now like, wait a minute, hold on a second. As this one says, I re-listened to his press conference, and this, I'm reluctant to say, did not sit right with my spirit. You're waking up. You're starting to understand. You know, again, you've been deep into the lies, and it's okay. Everybody gets fooled. You know, at some point in time, you know, do we not all buy a lemon, whether it's, well, for instance, I bought a juicer, and I thought it was going to be good. It was a piece of crap. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't even, you know, like at the level of a toy uh (laughs) we all get taken at some point in time by something it's waking up and saying hey you know i bit on that it's okay you know how how could you not bite on something that the system gives you it is the system after all it's it's been indoctrinating you all your life all your life this is what they work on they keep us divided you have to have some sort of borders to keep the division going. Unity is the answer, not unity under any of the systems that are on the planet now. Uh, No, not unity under communism, but but not unity under what we've called democracy or what we've called capitalism. Because again, as somebody has said, yes, and we've said it many times, uh, the indigenous people of the world they don't ever they didn't have any concept of land ownership they they didn't have that concept 
Yet that's something that we prize because we've been brought up in that, right? The American dream here in the U.S. was, you know, maybe a, a car and owning your own, you know, house. Uh, owning your own house outright, which you never own because you're still paying taxes on it and they could take it from you anytime they want. As long as we're using their monetary system, we're still debt slaves. That's, that's the basic thing. But more people are waking up to this, that it doesn't sit right. And, you know, the answer is not on the left or the right. The answer is not in this system, any of this system. It's not in the system they have in Russia, China, the EU, or the U.S., nowhere. And they won't allow a system on the planet uh, that goes against everything that really the control system stands for. Anybody that starts to do that, uh, you know, they always will erase any real threats. But listen to the words. I learned, I think I was, I don't know, 22 when I started that work. I learned that with the swipe of my pen, I could charge someone with the lowest level of offense. And because of the swipe of my pen, that person could be arrested. They could sit in jail for at least 48 hours. They could lose time from work and their family, maybe lose their job. They'd have to come out of their own pocket to help hire a lawyer. They lose. You know, when you look at the study of law, and we know some really high vibrational people right now that were lawyers, uh, you know, several dear friends, honestly that are now uh, very awakened, very high vibrational beings and prioritizing the spiritual side of life more than anything. But the study of law is, is a study of the dark control system and how it operates. And inherently it's pretty evil, but again, understand uh, who the real enemy is as she's talking about what, what the control system can do. And they're always putting in more laws. We see now in Germany and the UK, they're going down that, that route where you're not allowed to speak up at all. And in fact, they have people that have committed serious crimes, you know, egregious crimes, you know, physical harm to other people that are getting let off scot-free. But those that question the system are spending hard time in jail. Uh, they are, you know, I mean, people, people that are using plant medicine, you know, plant medicine to survive, they're doing some really hard time. And, it, you know, and we've seen by the system and, and the so-called science, the prescriptions that are made are so horrific and bad for our bodies and they don't heal anything. It's a band-aid. Maybe you need a whole life change, but the doctor can say, oh, don't worry about it. Just here, don't worry about changing your life around. Just take this pill. And then you, you just band-aid it. And that's the system we live in. So German authorities sound the alarm over a possible sabotage at a barracks near Munich after similar suspicious incidents. Uh, yeah, you know, again, you know, they're increasing uh, the war rhetoric which will manifest um, they're going to unfortunately probably be able to start this because again so many people are uh, controlled and still indoctrinated as poland is loading tanks right now um, <laughs> on vehicles for transport uh, peter from poland gave us an update um, which you know we'll we'll share we just got a, a brief listen to it but in which the um, Polish psychic uh, was saying that the U.S. is going to be divided into two sides, but the two sides that kind of still work together. Um, and so we'll look to see uh, more and share more with that. Uh, you could see that the split is coming. There's a division coming. There's, there's, it, it, it's a divorce. Uh, it, and that's so fundamentally obvious, but it's still not really what we need. What we need is to recognize there is one unified system at work here. One unified system that appears to be multiple parties fighting themselves when actually all it is is they are getting us to fight ourselves. And we have to look at that bigger picture. This is from China. Now, this is uh, from a province that is 
pretty close uh, to Taiwan. Uh, so they say there's been a transfer of over a thousand tanks and military equipment. Of course, they wouldn't uh, drive the tanks uh, 500 miles <laughs> to to go um, anywhere uh, substantial. That wouldn't make any sense with uh, the amount of fuel and everything. Um, loading them onto uh, ships is a real possibility, as this province uh, is is on the water, um, and you know it is possible that they they could be getting ready to send these either over to Taiwan or to use them in a different conflict. You know, the, some have said, are they sending these to Russia? Um, now again, this is obviously on the Pacific. Could they be sending them even farther? Hmm, maybe. We'll see. Germany is to ban all new Ukrainian military aid. Well, you know, this might look like a good thing, but the reality is uh, what they're doing is is they're getting ready for the war in a bigger sense. Um, and it says here, it looks like relations between Germany and Ukraine are about to turn ugly. Uh, the real thing is that they're, they're about to start the WW3. Uh, it's very, very close. This is the map I wanted to show you the other day. Um, and some people might say, wait a minute, why does the U.S. have the entire world that we know of divided under different U.S. military commands? Because the U.S. is, is not uh, the policing system of the control system for nothing. I mean, this is, this is what the control system does. The U.S. Uh, has been in 90 to 95% of the countries around the planet militarily. And that's the way it's been for a long time, you know, because really what World War II did, and then especially went with the breakup of the Soviet Union, was simply shift power uh, over to to Washington D.C. in a more outright sense, um, just like the Roman Empire. It just morphed. It, it all it's done is morph. The the con real control system has not changed, in my mind, uh, really for thousands and thousands of years. This is from the Department of Defense. You know, again. It, it's just showing you the reality of the world that we live in. Meanwhile, as they get ready for the DNC tomorrow, and tomorrow's the 19th, by the way, so that's a date that Joni Petri, the Vedic astrologer, has been pointing out as watch out for tension on that day. And here you have, again, looks like somebody's planning to do a lot of construction, or maybe they're going to get some exercise with their arms. Well, of course they are. It's just, you know, and one of those coincidences and somebody must have had some bricks and they had to set them down somewhere getting heavier. They were tired of carrying them around and they're just going to happen to sort of kind of be handy when someone needs it. But yes, I mean, Joni has been talking about this one for a long time where Jupiter, I believe it is the 19th, is moving into 23 degrees in Taurus and that's with Vedic astrology not Western so it's going to be different depending on which uh, astrology you study and I have found that you know they both blend together but also even in the Western it's been said that that time is also going to be a little bit bumpy so it's definitely astrologically speaking it's a day to watch. This says the, gov uh, the governor of Illinois, by the way, owns a brick company. Yeah, well, look at uh, J.D. Vance's ownings. Look at Nancy Pelosi's investments. You know, look to the fact that, again, anybody that believes a billionaire is going to lead us out of this darkness um, really needs to have a little more uh, coffee. Maybe, maybe go to cappuccino or something stronger. Uh, because no, you don't get to be at that point in the system without being part of the system. It should be so obvious. And yes, you can overcome your programming. Meanwhile, earthquake scientists are learning warning signs of the big one. Hmm. You know, again, Japan issued that mega quake warning. Now, you know, we are getting very close. And I still think that, as I've always thought, uh, the real war for those of us on, on U.S. and U.K. soil, I think it starts really with, with the big one. I, I think in so many ways uh, that is, you know, the, the shot that's going to tell the racers and go.
Yeah, absolutely. And this is on the Kamchatka Peninsula. We have a 7.0. I've seen other sources saying 7.4. Uh, now they're showing 29 kilometers deep. I had seen others showing it was a little bit deeper. Um, we, we had also a uh, 6.1 previously. Uh, you know, so is this the big one? No, no, no. But, but this is the progression I would totally expect. You know, bigger quakes in Japan and around Japan moving up this way, moving over to Alaska and down into Cascadia and San Andreas. So, you know, for me, uh, this looks like a logical progression. Uh, so, you know, be aware we've had some unusual swarming uh, down in California. And right now there's only 201 quakes they're showing uh, right now on the USGS map. As you can see, you know, some swarming going on up by the geysers, but, you know, relatively quiet, which, which again would have me uh, concerned too. Meanwhile, the, the mud flood keeps rolling on. This is in Vienna. Uh, yeah, this is exactly, you know, war, conflict, pestilence, plagues, and then wash it all away, rinse and repeat. This, this has been done just constantly in our history if you really really look at it and again uh when we do when i do uh take the pleasure of of watching some of the ufc events i see less of, of the uh you know advertisements for things like acne cream and this and that than i did before i think because people are starting to wake up more and more here you go. This is right there. Exposure to 5G can cause headaches, insomnia, cognitive fog, fatigue, tinnitus, vision problems, heart issues, flu-like symptoms, muscle and nervous system problems. This is right on the label. Many people have finally noticed that when they look at the plate on the bottom of their microwave, it actually is a radiation signal. They've been telling you things, and yet you keep, you know, not everybody, but and yet the masses keep just not seeing. It's because, again, what's in plain sight sometimes doesn't get noticed. Sometimes it's really difficult to change the way you do things for a whole generation because microwaves were so popular, but just think they were made popular by the controllers, and... It, it's not good for you and it's not good for your food there are I mean Mike and I we heat stuff up on the stove or we eat it cold you know it just depends on what we're doing but you can also get these air fryers and they have non-toxic air fryers because you want to watch the um, the non non sticky coat there's non-toxic air fryers you can get and you can throw stuff in there and heat it up really fast I mean, anything is a better alternative than those microwaves, uh, really. You don't want to be heating your drinks, your food, your children's food, the baby bottle. No, no, no. Find find another way. Yeah, absolutely. And so here uh, he's saying, this just blew my mind. The food industry was purchased by the cigarette industry. What? Our food literally now is a science experiment to addict children. Uh, the pyramid lie in the 90s, the two largest food companies in the world were R.J. Reynolds, Philip Morris. When the Surgeon General said cigarettes were problemic, uh, cigarette companies used their cash piles to buy entire sections of food companies. The two biggest mergers and acquisitions deals in the history up into the 90s were cigarette companies buying food companies. These two cigarette companies shifted their thousands of scientists from making cigarettes addictive uh, to making the food addictive. Yes, absolutely. And then lobbying to give you that food pyramid where carbs and sugar were the base of the food pyramid. Yes, because that will induce an, an inflammatory response and, and put your immune system into a catastrophic state. Is Doesn't the world have a, a compromised immune system at this point in time? food industry then paid off the FDA, USDA, and Harvard to create reports that sugar isn't the cause of obesity. And then they shifted our diets to ultra-high processed foods with many additives, which again weaken the immune system. So, you know, today a typical child's diet consists of 70% ultra-processed foods, and they're literally created by the cig or cigarette industry, or what was, to addict kids. And there's chemicals in there that don't need to be in there. Why are they in there? They actually cost more money to put them in there. 
It's because of the addiction, and they want to have you addicted. It's tough. It, it is tough to break this. Uh, and then it talks about seed oils were actually created by Rockefeller as a byproduct of oil production, basically engine lubricant. This is all accurate. It's, it's all accurate. The, they'll keep denying it. But, you know, we keep seeing the world is is increasingly having uh, this type of uh, of response. And, you know, we me and Cindy, we cannot tolerate it. Um, when I was at the uh, farmer's market, you know, there's, there's this lovely older Indian couple. And when, you know, she looked over and smiled. I got to go buy something from her, even though I know it's not good. I know they're not cooking with organic uh, ingredients and I did and I could tolerate it but I felt I felt it you know it gave me um, kind of like you know typical allergy type of response now I don't usually have allergies uh, I really don't I haven't had allergies ever since you know what year is it <laughs> almost 20 years almost 20 years I want to say 17 years I've been mostly allergy free um, and I don't think it was really possible for me to overcome that living um, basically 30 miles east of New York City for so much of my life because of all the pollution and all the contaminants in the air. It wasn't until I got down to the fresh Carolina air um, that I started to really feel better. Um, but again, it's what we put into our body. Uh, I had gone to an allergist like 30 years ago because I was having all sorts of issues. And, and the way he, he described it to me, it's like take a pot, fill it halfway with water, and then every time you're taking in something that's causing an inflammatory response, it's raising up the, the water level to the point where it boils over, bubbles over, and that is your, your allergies that are, are, are showing and manifesting in your body. So he said the key is to remove allergens. Now, if you pull yourself into and put yourself into a different location where all of a sudden the air is much fresher, right away you're going to have a reduction in that. Now, if you take yourself out of an area that is bombarded with uh, these frequencies from those towers, right away it's going to go down if you take yourself out of a population that 60 70 percent of people did a certain thing and now it's it's as if you're walking around a dog that's shedding all day long you know you take yourself out of that it, you know it's going to go down uh our our dear one of our best friends we we consider her a sister uh she was a little bit sluggish uh to to get out of Orange County, um, but now that she's out of Orange County and, and our neighbor, I mean, she's crystal clear and she's so happy she did it, even though it was a huge move. You know, a, a lady doing this by yourself, moving away from all your you know friends and family that you've been there for, for decades, uh, coming into a place where you've never been and and you know an environment she's happy she loves it here and she loves the clarity that she's gotten and her abilities are going through the roof her intuition uh she's having visionary dreams now because you know it's she's not bombarded by all these signals her brain is not inflamed like it was and you can't help you can't help it with the environment that you're in if you're in like the middle of LA or New York or DC or London or Paris or, or any of those mega cities over in China with 20 million people. You can't help it. You cannot get clear. It's, it's like an impossibility to get clear in that environment. So it's just a matter of what is your real priority. Well, it's it's so difficult when you're right smack in the middle of the city and you can't see the forest for the trees and you're just being bombarded by all different directions. And then when you get out of that and the body is able to take a deep breath and then, you know, it does the EMFs do take a little time to detox. Um, it's not like they just go away. It's like they really kind of make their way into the body. It's it's something that even though we can't see it, we shouldn't write it off as something that just, you know, if you walk out of the EMFs and into the clearing, it's not going to go away instantly, but you are going to be able to rest. Your body is going to be able to rest. It's going to be able to repattern. You know, uh, abilities go up. People start feeling better. I mean, there's nothing like being out in the country. And yes, you you do have to sacrifice some things. And 
but it, it's it's been worth it you know it's really truly been worth it and anybody who's really struggling in the city if you can't get out i would suggest at least taking a weekend and getting a b and b out in the woods and just let your body rest and relax and and recoup and and recover and allow your body to have the direction and the space necessary to help itself heal absolutely so here you have a virtual reconstruction of the Colossus of Rhodes, which was destroyed in 226 BC. Again, these wars are nonstop, and the wars are here to wipe away all our history and then give us a new history, a history from the perspective of, of the invading conquerors that took over this planet so long ago. Why would they make a statue that big? Well, obviously, it's a memorial to beings that were literally that big. Uh, and also, how could they place an 80 ton stone on this 216 foot tall temple uh they say a thousand there's a lot of artifacts over in in india um that they're saying are a thousand or 1500 years that you could add you know at least two three four thousand years to them uh they're a lot more uh, ancient in fact you know one of the things they want to do is give you um the point of view uh, that the Sumerian city-states were the first. Why? Because that's where the system first anchored itself here on the planet. The reality is, no, when you look to the Indus Valley civilization, uh, that is a representation of what was here before we were invaded by the dark draconian forces. When you look to doorways like this, why would anybody need a doorway that big? I mean, seriously. Well, it's just all ego. It's it's pride. It's fluff. Just because they could. Uh, no, no. And, well, if they could, then how did they do this? I mean, obviously, a laser is the easy, easy explanation. But then, you know, these are ancient stones. And, and supposedly we didn't have lasers. We showed one of these. But, again, you find these all around the world somebody had some pretty high level technology and then this is a classic video of orbs creating a crop circle the big question how are you know crop circles created well some are people out there tromping down the crops others are what we would call foo fighters these are foo fighters uh you know in a different age world war ii pilots saw these flying next to them now I, i've had them come right by me and and we've gotten many videos uh, where we've shown uh, these things are out there all the time. You just don't notice them because, you know, they move so fast typically. But, yeah, they obviously, th this, these are messages. Here is, uh, again, another orb. This is in Russia, and you can see it clearly just hovering there. I know, and y you look at them, and a lot of people are still naysayers, but if you look at all of the reports and all of the pictures, millions of millions and millions of reports, not every single one can be just a fallacy or made up or a lie. You know, you, you really have to look at the world and see how it's being run. And once you get a good check on it, like, you know, this doesn't make any sense. But then when you put it in perspective and say, well, there's certain people working with other people that are not of this planet that don't have our best interests at heart. Then it starts to click. So, you know, if you if you read enough and you look enough, you, you will understand that these things are not from this world always. And, and in some cases, they could be from this world, but they're from parts of it that are hidden to us. And also, sometimes they are from... Uh, places we can't go like really uh, Antarctica and, and what lies beyond it there's so much footage that came out in California and of course when there's going to be legitimate sightings you're going to have a lot of people putting in uh, AI and digital recreations and that um, in the mass sightings that that happened in California so there was some um, stuff put in there to discredit and we didn't show any of those clips, but they came out after um, after we had reported on it yesterday. But you know, here is another one uh, that feels like it's probably a little bit more legit as far as the energy into it. Uh, again, you know, we've never been alone. We've never been alone, and and there were beings here before Homo sapiens was here. 
So, you know, again, and yet we are not the real us because we are consciousness itself exploring this reality inhabiting a human body but ultimately we're not always humans this is a temporary human experience so you know again the the whole paradigm all these paradigms that they give us anything mainstream is all about controlling your consciousness and manipulating into you you giving away your power you know, this is something that I, I find to be very beautiful. I look at it and I see a light ship. I see beings from a different density. And I also see a star family visitation here. And we just did a video on one of our family members who had a beautiful visit from her star family. They showed themselves and they allowed her to take pictures. And this happens when you are able to awaken and raise yourself to a certain degree your star family they will come and see you and they will say hey i'm here and they'll make it so that you cannot possibly <laughs> logically talk yourself out of it they just come and they're like we're right here and they'll leave evidence and they'll leave a memory and this happens after you are activated and after you are on your path it's almost like I see people, they have a contract with their star family and themselves. Like, if I say this thing or if I do this thing, you come and just kind of give me some backup. Tell me I'm not alone. And they do that. And it happens with person after person that we activate and we work on them for a little while. I see it over and over and over. I don't know. It, it's just something that I find to be so beautiful to see the interaction between a, a person having a human experience and their star family and they talk about it and they send pictures about it and they're just kind of taken back and i remember my own visits from my star family so that's what this feels like to me it feels like this is probably a star a, a light ship making itself known and allowing certain humans to say hey it's it's you can see us we can see you we're here we got you absolutely so you know what is activation would be a good uh, topic for a video maybe we'll put that up on hearts home uh and again everything goes up on patreon so you know it, again we've never been alone never in and there are many beings that you can't see uh that are rooting for you right now and they're literally trying to wake you up, but they've got to be careful because they don't want to, uh, you know, basically breach any karmic laws. And these little guys are just adorable. What's what's cuter than little baby goats? I mean, what really? What is cuter? I don't know. I can't get over baby goats. I love them. They're adorable. She won't let me have any yet. No, they eat too much of everything. Yeah, we, our fruit trees, everything would be <laughs> gone. <laughs> As always, guys, we look forward to your comments. Thanks for being part of this family. Keep spreading the awakening. Uh, do like, share, subscribe, and, and thank you again so much for your support. Source bless. Namaste. Namaste.